Being smart as a football player is probably one of the most underrated and neglected skills in the game, although anyone would want to become an intelligent player like De Bruyne, Iniesta or Conte, little time is invested in work that targets your football IQ and your overall understanding of the game. It is no secret that the greatest players of all time weren't always physically gifted, but it was their minds that brought them to the top. So let's find out how you can get closer to the elite level by improving your intelligence as a player. Let's start off this video by going deep into the meaning of football intelligence. So what is football intelligence? There are many ways you can go about it and analyze the term, but I like to think of it as solving game specific problems with all the resources you and your team have available in the most efficient way possible. Put in simple words, football intelligence is your ability to do the right thing at the right place and at the right time. This is something that requires you to perceive, process and act upon the information you receive from your surroundings as fast and precise as possible. The real question though is how do you become a smart footballer? So effective problem solving in football requires the player to possess a series of skills as well as the ability to use those skills to solve game specific problems. Therefore, if you want to become a smart football player, your training and overall development should consist of training stimuli that will help you perceive, think and execute smarter but also faster. So let's go over 9 ways you can start cultivating your football intelligence. A distinct trait of smart footballers is their ability to handle the ball with exceptional skill regardless of the situation. Think of it like this. The better your technical level, the less time you will need to execute a technical action with higher quality and the more confident and aware you are of yourself but also the playing environment. Not to mention the fact that an increased technical skill level can lead to those cold-blooded actions that we're going to talk about later in this video. This makes technique a fundamental part of smart decision making that enables you to act faster and more precisely when the ball is on fire. Exceptional technical skill simply is a prerequisite to take smart actions with a high success rate. Touch or space limitations are a great tool to use to force a faster decision making process. It's really simple to explain. The fewer touches or space you have available during a drill, the faster you'll be required to scan, process and act with the ball. This increase in pressure will help you view the game from another perspective, start feeling something like a slow motion effect. And all of a sudden, each game scenario will slow down for you, allowing you to make more precise decisions. It's definitely something weird and you might have not heard of it before, but I'm quite sure the players that have experienced this slow motion effect can relate and provide proof in the comment section. The impact of touch and or space limitations can make a really positive impact on your decision making process and that is why it's one of my favorite tools to use with players to slowly bring their intelligence and speed of play to elite level standards. Having said that, there is also one more thing we shall take into consideration. Touch and space limitations are all good and fine, but they simply can't match up the long-term effect of playing with or against higher level footballers. You might be bragging about being the best player on your team or even the whole league for consecutive seasons. Is this offering you the opportunity to achieve growth and develop further into the player you want to become? In most cases, no. The comfort you're feeling in your current team or league is slowly killing your potential without you even realizing it. I'm not saying you should sacrifice all of your playing time to go to a challenging environment where you will only train and not play, but finding the balance between those two ends will massively help you become the smarter, higher level football player you strive to become. Playing with or against smarter players and getting outside of your comfort zone will force your survival instincts to match your opponent's level of play. This will lead to growth and force you to think and execute smarter actions in order for you to survive as a player. Apart from developing the fundamental technical skills of football, you also need to develop your brain's ability to perceive and process information as well as send the correct signals and commands to your body with the proper timing. One of the key cognitive skills you should develop is scanning ability. Getting your head up and checking your surroundings to absorb as much information around you as possible is a key step that guides smart, precise and successful actions on the ball. Cultivate the habit of scanning before receiving the ball and force faster processing. The earlier and the more 
information your brain has available, the smarter and faster actions you can take. Having said that, your cognitive skills don't solely rely on how you scan, but also on how you process the information you receive, which leads us to the next point of the video. Your processing ability is dependent on a multitude of factors, with the most important one being stored memory. In order to solve a game-specific problem with smart actions, you also need to have a broad tactical database that will make you versatile as a player in terms of tactical knowledge and will give you more tools to solve the problems of the game. Now this doesn't always have to be something too specific, especially when we're trying to establish a good base of knowledge. Just start off with basic movements of your position and your team's style of play, as well as the most common tactical patterns and principles of the game, such as pass and support at a good passing angle, triangle formations, and all of that good stuff. A smart player simply has access to a wide range of tactical solutions that enable him to think and act smarter on the ball. But how do you improve your tactical database? One way you can expand your tactical knowledge of the game is by watching elite level players playing your position or world class teams that share the same philosophy and playing principles with your team or even your own game. When analyzing games, attention to detail plays a vital role. Keeping an eye on your target players and watching every movement and action they take on and off the ball is key to gaining a deep understanding of the position. Also, don't try to only learn from their successful plays but also from their mistakes. In fact, it's in those instances that you should act your brain more and start problem solving. Find the solutions and options the player had but didn't use and make sure you're not doing the same mistakes. Books that cover different topics about the tactical side of the game can massively help you increase the range of tactical information you have stored inside your brain. Start off by understanding your position. Ask yourself various questions and try to find the solutions within books. Gaining clarity on your individual roles is the key that can unlock smart play. By gaining that clarity, many plays of yours will happen almost instinctively without you even having to consciously think about their solution. Having a big palette of tactical theory in your mind offers you more solutions ready for implementation. However, the theory is nothing if you don't practice it and gain the experience attached to it. I'm a huge believer that training, no matter the quality being trained, shouldn't be overly complex and too specific. However, I do think that establishing a balance between simple and complex is key and a combination that will most probably give you the most bang for your buck. On one hand, you shall start off your sessions with something simple and maybe even repetitive to force an ingrained quality inside a specific movement pattern or skill. As you progress more into the session, I think you should progressively increase the specificity of your drills. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to throw in a bunch of different drills together and start doing flashy stuff, although this might be great to get some likes on Instagram, that's not the kind of complexity that we're seeking. So what is a complex drill you may ask? Now I'm going to share something with you that will help you create position specific drills no matter what position you're playing. The process is pretty easy and straightforward. You simply break down your game and your individual roles and ask yourself what the most common game problems and scenarios you face during a game are. Then you basically lay out these scenarios on a piece of paper and start playing with different shapes and angles. These drills are called position specific drills and will help you get accumulated to solving the most common game specific problems you have to deal with in your position. Quality rep after quality rep will enable you to solve those game specific problems in a matter of milliseconds when it's game time. You see, being smart as a player isn't always a matter of creativity and flair, but more so in knowing the solution to a game specific problem before you even have to solve it. You're simply shortening the gap between perception and action, jumping over the processing phase. Some months ago, I came across a really interesting article online, which you can find in the description below, that was going over football intelligence. In that article, emotional management stood out as the skill that is directly attached to the actions you take during a game as well as their success rate. You see, emotions are present in each action we take on the field. You know, it's that feeling you get inside your gut while taking an action. That's what I'm talking about. That feeling may be positive and confident or negative and filled with self-doubt. There's also another feeling which basically isn't a feeling. It's your ability to make a cold blood decision. Reaching that level of decision making simply means that you're confident in yourself and trust your actions. That cold blooded feeling you get while finishing a goal or delivering a world class level assist is the level you want to strive for. Elite level players have the ability to manage their emotions, balance them out and take actions based on what they think, not how they feel. Allowing your 
emotions to take control over your actions is a shortcut to a decreased success rate and a slower speed of play. You may think that proper emotional management may restrict your creativity as a player, but in reality it does the complete opposite. It allows your brain to take control and guide the play with your memory and creativity. You can achieve that level of emotional management by investing in your mental health, your confidence, and by gaining clarity on your individual roles as a player. Emotional management might be one of the most interesting topics related to football intelligence that not everyone has come across yet. I truly think that it is vital for achieving an elite level decision making ability and that you should dig deeper inside the topic and strive for the best results possible. Becoming a smarter player is something you should constantly be striving for. At the end of the day, the game is played with your mind. Your whole neuromuscular system is just the tool that executes the commands the brain sends. Fine-tuning your neuromuscular system and constantly enhancing the stored bits of information you have stored inside your brain's memory are the keys that will lead to an increase in your football intelligence. The quality and speed of your perception, your processing and your actions will primarily determine how successful you are going to perform and you can quickly realize this by watching the all-time best players. So please, start working on your intelligence as a player. You can really unlock the next level of your career. Until the next time, have a good one.